Hi everybody, welcome back once again. Uh, what I'd like to do today is to talk about some of the nostalgic paintings that I've been working on over the years. Um, I've done many, many paintings over the years and many nostalgic paintings over the years. But what I thought I'd do, uh, in the not too distant future, what I'm going to do is do sort of a demonstrations of painting. Uh, however, we can see that anywhere these days and I thought we'd just, to start us off, I'd talk about the actual mechanics of the painting and uh, what was on my mind when I was actually putting it together, the sketch, etc. And so without much ado, what I'll say is this, our first one I've sorted out is this, um, this is the print of the Rates of Bellevue, um, going back to my day, in the, uh, going back something like 60 years ago, uh, scary as it sounds, that's about the time I pitched it. and. Um, this is a print of it. The original uh, has been sold to uh, somebody who came to the gallery and bought it, and uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, but we have many, many prints of these nostalgic, uh, these nostalgic times. So what happened with this particular one and what sparked it off was that I was born uh, around in Manchester, about within a half an hour's walk of Bellevue itself. And uh, as kids, talking about what? 11, 12, 13 year olds, we uh, we never paid to get in Bellevue. I'm telling you a secret, don't tell anybody. Uh, what we did, we went round the back of Bellevue, little scallywags as we were, and there's a, a massive um, uh, sort of gate there. I think it was either dark blue or dark green, I can't remember. And being about this high, uh, it seemed to go on forever. But it was no problem to us. This, this was on the sort of corner between, I think it was Hunter's Lane and Kirkman's Lane. Kirkman's Lane. And uh, those of you, and there are thousands of you out there, I know this, who, uh, who went to Bellevue and about my age, you'll know about this. You might have even done it yourself. And what we did, we used to go around the back of there, around this thundering great big gate, and you had massive spikes on the top of this, this gate uh, to deter anybody getting in, of course, because there's some valuable stuff in there. Uh, however, uh, we were war children, weren't we? And we were skinny and leaf and very thick, and we just managed to... Skew up that wall, no problem, straight over, in between the spikes, not a problem, down the other side, skew around the wall, into the main area of uh, Bellevue itself, over one or two other walls, down the speedway area that way, and into uh, the Bellevue area itself, into the zoo and the theme park, etc. We had many, a good day. we didn't do it like every other week, we did it, you know, it could have been every several weeks, but we did it, and I'm sorry, but we didn't pay. We paid later on when I started earning a bit of money. Uh, however, we uh, we didn't at that time, so there's my little secret. Man. I um, anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about why I pitched it on this particular one. The Bobs, world famous, I believe, certainly European famous, uh, massive theme park for its time, a one-off Manchester famous for it at that time, and uh, just love to be there. And the Bobs is iconic, still iconic. You know, you can go on the internet, have a look at it, YouTube anywhere. And you'll find pictures of the Bobs, you'll find uh, movies that people who've lived it. I've been watching them and I've sort of researched part of uh, uh, the lapses in my memory because, I, as I said, I'm going back 60 years ago. So I've uh, I put down what I can remember and then had my memory jolted as I've gone along with uh, the different photographs and the different movies. And uh, the Bobs, yeah. Uh, as you can see, the Bobs here, if I can come round the front, it's got a little uh, area here, it's called the Caterpillar. Um, the caterpillar was here, uh, roughly there, you know, and uh, you, you, those of you who've been on it will know this. We used to get on the caterpillar. This is when we had a few shillings to spend on there. And when we got on there, it was like a big circular um, a carousel. Um, but it's, and it was on a track. But instead of going flat, it sort of went up and down in that respect, all around this thing, like a caterpillar walks. But when you got on, it was like uh, various pods that were attached together in a continuous motion and it was a bit like um, a, a, a sort of snake swallowing its own tail so it was continuous and when you got in after a little while as it started off this awning came over the whole lot of it in a concertina fashion and covered everybody so it looked like a giant caterpillar big green awning going around and although it wasn't doing much it was mysterious and it was brilliant and it was lovely and, and uh, and it was quiet in there, and it used to muffle all the, the noise of Bellevue out. So it was a little bit of a magic area that was. So that was that was the caterpillar. I remember that one quite, uh, and, and a lot of you remember it too. The Bobs, 
Now, I only heard this recently, and I'm not sure how true this is, but they say that it got its name from the fact that uh, the uh, it used to cost a shilling in those days to go for a ride on the bus, uh, which was a bob in those days. A shilling was a bob. Um, I'm not so sure, because if the, what happened if the prices went up, I'm sure that you couldn't call it a bob and tuppence, could you, or one and tuppence, so I'm not quite sure about that. I like to believe that's because it used to bob up and down as it went around. It makes more sense. Anyway, that's what I think. Maybe you'll know different. Somebody's going to let me know about this, I'm sure. Uh, and that was this part of um, the, the theme park itself. So, yeah, I started it off at the Bobs because of um, it seemed important to me and, uh, and all of those of you out there who know it, um, that um, that was an iconic little area. Next to the Bobs, and you can't see it on here because of the angle, was a thing called the Water Chute. Now, the Water Chute was a massive, it went up one way, right up into the gods, came round and then came right down the other side into like a giant U shape and hit the water at the bottom as it came down and it splashed straight into the water and all the water cascaded out and hit the sides which was um, massive pieces of plate glass and you stood outside that. Nobody actually got wet because the water was dispersed. One thing I do remember about that um, water shoot was that uh, the in those days there was conscription on, you know, we had the national service and you always, always, almost always saw the um, actual navy, like you know, the, the, the young lads from the navy coming in, and uh, dressed up, and you could have to wear the uniform with the girls on their arms, and that was what they headed for. And you always saw some sailors on. I don't know. It's just the way it worked out. You sailors will know this, so <laughs> you know. Perhaps we'll meet one day and talk about it. That's why you took your girls. The other place you took your girls, you said I noticed, was on the uh, in the side of theme park itself. And they had lots of concessioners, of course, popcorn, you know, uh, toffee apples. The toffee apples was to die for. The, um, and various things, you know, candy floss, hot dogs, you know, donuts. But they had these machines that were like a punch bag machine. They still have them somewhere, I'm sure they do. And what you did, you put your penny, your tuppence in there, you pull this big punch bag down, like a big ball, really, on a chain, really sturdy chain, to about your height to punch it. And at the back of it was a dial, and that dial, it's like a clock. And when you punched it, it the, the bag hit the dial, the ball hit the dial, and that told you how hard you'd punched it. Uh, soft, medium, hard, well done. Of course, come on you sailors, you knew this, you had to be the ones that were the hard ones, didn't you? The girls were stood there watching, you'll see photographs of many of these, that these uh, girls stood there watching these sailors. Looking at, I hope he's going to get this right. He'd better hit it so hard that, you know, he's not going to come out a wimp. And these sailors really went for it. <laughs> Whap! They hit these things and bashed it all over the place. It was fantastic to watch, and just for a bit of machoism, it was it was brilliant. And um, yeah, that, that that was a good uh, good thing to observe. And bear in mind, you know, I'm talking, you know, average twelve year old, um, still observing this, you know, and it stays with you all these years. You know, these things that you think, you know, you forget for a while, and then something clicks. You think, I oh, remember that bit, you know. And Bellevue, yeah, Bellevue brings it all back. Bellevue, certain parts of it too. Um, elephant ride. The um, the various. I mean, the elephant house. Oh, the elephant. I love elephants, right? I'm going to say that now before I'm going to go further. I love elephants. Okay. So what I'm going to say is no. I'm sorry, elephants. It's not being detrimental to you, but you stink. The elephant house. It stank. It was. It was hot. You could smell it a mile away, because. When you walked in, of course, it was a massive, huge place, you know, and massive iron bars. Well, they would be, wouldn't they? And they, they were actually, they weren't the cages, they were like enclosures. And the elephants would come up and put the trunks in there. So they'd eat a lot and they drink a lot. And what goes in has got to come out. And boy, did it stink. You walked in, full of the joys of spring, and you walked out thinking, as a kid, you've got to get out of there. It was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, giraffe house wasn't quite as bad. You know, the ladies, they were quite decent. They put the long necks down and these great big pearls of purple tongue used to come out begging for food. And uh, sometimes they got it, they didn't get any of me, but they got it off uh, quite a few. People used to take the sandwiches with them and etc. And you see the mothers and fathers giving the children to feed these animals. I'm not sure how, whether they should have been doing it, but they certainly did do it. And uh, yeah, that was great. The hippopotamus, I remember two hippopotamus. Oh, hippopotami, I don't know. You can tell me about that one. Uh, I remember two of them. And they were always sort of playing about, a bit of the odd fight in here, but they always had their jaws open. And the jaws were always open because 
every so often and they ate a lot you see they ate like cabbages and lettuce and carrots anything like that and the um, the keepers would come along and you knew we saw them come along they'd just stand and watch and then they'd throw these, these great big chasms up they used to swallow these things up and the kids used to get bits of sandwiches and things some were throwing bottle tops and stuff which i thought was a bit you know unfair but they did it kids being kids i never did however they um these were beautiful animals but awesome Awesome, they made some weird noises though, I'd say the teeth. Apparently they're quite dangerous, but not in there. If you didn't get any water with them, you were okay, you know. Um, somewhere else in the park, they had the snake pit. The snake pit was, um, it was outside actually, not enclosed. And it was a big oval uh, sort of um, wall, which was cemented. So it was quite thick, but it was rounded on the top. And I remember as a kid, I could just about look over it. Uh, in the middle of that, there was an island surrounded by, by water, of course, so that there were water snakes in it, but they couldn't get up the sides because it was quite, it was steep. And uh, again, every so often, the keeper would come along, a suited gentleman, and he'd get across to the island. Never did quite find out how he got across there. He used to, used to see him there, came from nowhere. And he used to get all of a handful of these snakes and show them to the kids and, you know, the parents, etc. And, you know, clap, and it was fantastic. But I don't know whether there were any poisonous ones. He used to say, that one's fine, don't go near that one. That's okay, stay away from that. You know, so we used to do all these things. I know that was the snake pit. I don't think there was anything really nasty in there, otherwise I don't think he'd have been in there, would he really? Um, and that was the snake pit, that was brilliant. Other places, I don't know, there were all sorts of, oh, the, the wildcats, you name it, uh, sea lions performing. There was all this tremendous amount of stuff going on. It was a massive place. It was huge, it was beautiful. It was lovely to be in the atmosphere, it was so good. And they were the sort of animal parks. Of course, they had the botanical gardens there, all rare sorts of plants, etc. from all over the world. They brought them in. Uh, very well thought out, beautiful place. I remember there was a big clock face made up of, of, um, of uh, these um, beautiful flowers. And it's been emulated. And then I suppose you got the idea from elsewhere anyway in the world you could do. So, um, yeah, that was good. Uh, they various things really let me think about something again it must be um yeah the mechanics those were like the, the living things then you'd go on to i get you past things like they had boxing there but mainly on saturday evening there was boxing and wrestling ballroom dancing brass band competitions all sorts going on they came from all over the country and i think europe too uh the circus was well renowned i think a lot of that came from blackpool if i'm not mistaken uh that went uh, that was a, a superb uh, it, the trouble is that in those days, of course, you've got like performing elephants and wildcats jumping through hoops and men with whips making a room through fiery hoops, etc. Even as a kid, I didn't like that. I thought it was a bit degrading and unfair to those animals. However, that was the way it was. PC these days, it's not like that. You don't need that. You've got Cirque du Soleil and all that sort of stuff, which is equally fantastic. But that was the way it was then, 60 years ago. And um, then you'd get something, oh, the, uh, the Wall of Death. I think that was where the bodies there to the left hand side of that viewing it from where you are um, in right into the main arena there they had this wall of death and I, like, the way, best way I can describe it is like a huge barrel right it, barrel shape made of wood big circular contraction where you'd get motorbikes a couple would get motorbikes remember going in there and then they'd go around the inside of this wall of death and to get to, as an observer you would walk up the wooden steps outside and peer over the top of this arena, this raised arena. And it had to be high because what happened was the, the uh, motorbikes would build up, build up speed on the bottom. And then there was a ramp that brought them up onto the wall gradually. And at one point they'd hit the ramp and they'd go round and round and round on a bleak angle as they went round. And it was the inertia, it was the speed of the motorbikes and the lads on them that kept them stuck to that wall. And as they decreased and decreased, they came down and down again and, and came off at the bottom again. I don't think there were any accidents there. They always managed to get in and get out quite easily. That was brilliant. The wall of death, noisy. It was noisy. Christ God, it was noisy. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, things like that. There were various. Oh, they had, they had, I've got to tell you this one, the smallest circus ever. It was called a flea circus. And they had actual fleas with a lot of them knocking about. And um, they... Um, what they do, they used to train them. This chap used to come, I'm not sure if his wife or his assistant, but they used to sit in this concessionary like a large um, sort of hot thing. 
and you used to pay a little. I think you paid to go in that one. I'm not quite sure. I never went in, but I know of it. And uh, they used to have these little, they had these fleas, actual fleas, took them out of a jar, put them down. And they used to ride bicycles and fence. They used to stick these little sticks on them and they used to fence the box and actually pull and ride a bicycle. So you tell me, you figure it, because I can't do it to this day. Uh, it's not there anymore, but I believe it was the last one of its kind. I don't think there's been one since. Again, maybe you can tell me about that. Um, what else? I mean, I basically, I've, um, yeah, what I'm saying about this now is that, uh, going back to this particular, um, this is a print, as I said, of the painting, but it's the image, the image. The original to this was actually a pastel painting. Um, I based it at this angle because I thought it was slightly better than you could than, than other angles you could <coughs> excuse me so I could get more in there is an angle outside and I'm still considering doing it um, which if you're outside the main entrance of Bellevue proper as you're looking at it uh, on the this is going back of course on the left hand side there's uh, the Palm Court like a big hotel uh, public house thing very popular on the right hand side you've got the actual main entrance but to the right again and just above the wall you could see this huge uh, bobs coming up and the, and the actual water shoot now that is a good shot because you can get a clear view of that so maybe you know in the future i'll be painting that i'm thinking about that one because it certainly is a good uh, a good vantage point just outside that um uh, that um, uh, entrance to bellevue that's where the bus stop was and the number you'll know this the number 210 trolley bus used to come, the 210 trolley bus used to come down from Manchester Centre, past Bellevue, up through Denton, Denton Corner there, and, and straight up into Hyde, I think it was a terminus up there, turn around and come straight back again, you know, quite a, quite a run actually, that was the bus we got, if we didn't feel like walking, but quite often, just across the road from uh, Bellevue was the Bellevue Baths, we could, uh, ma and males above one door, and females above the other, and they never twinge your mix. And we used to go in there quite often and then from there we'd go to the park, Bell, uh, uh, Gorton Park. Gorton Park was at the back of uh, Gorton Bats. Massive park, lovely park. Um, you could, they had brass bands there on a, on a Sunday afternoon and we used to go and watch that and it was tree lined around this big green. Apart from the main little playing area for the kiddies, it's tree lined around it. And caterpillars, you see, they had these great big black hairy caterpillars on these trees in the summer. And we used to, oh, early spring, summer, and we used to go climb up these and collect these things. But they used to have parkies in those days, the name of the parkies, park keepers. And kids, you know, they weren't allowed to climb the trees in those days. They'd actually smack you around the back of the head and send you on your way and get away with it. Can't do it these days, of course. But those days, they'd grab all your leg, come on down, what are you doing with your leg? Off you go, bam, off you go, so you're leggy. But you've got your caterpillars, so who cares? You know, so long as you've got your caterpillars. I don't know what we did with them afterwards actually, but um, you've got them. A bit of fun everywhere, wasn't it? Uh, little brook at the end of there where they used to have tadpoles and frog spawn and used to wait for the frogs coming out when they, they were grew up. So all around. Anyway, this is what I do, you see. I diversify. I just go away from the main point. The main point is Bellevue that we're talking about, this actual painting. And uh, yeah, so I hope I've made myself clear as the reason that I painted this is simply because it's a nostalgic painting. In my, my memories are your memories of a certain age, of course, age group. And those of you who have not reached this age group yet um, would love to, I, I know you'd love to have been there. And you can research it, you can ask your parents, your grandparents about this. Um, this theme park is fantastic, um, Bellevue, that we all came to love and enjoy. And that was the reason, because uh, it's a nostalgic thing and it's a pleasant memory. In in days when uh, when it wasn't all pleasant, because Manchester then, it was absolutely, oh, it was foggy and smoggy. Smoggy was the word. I remember on the paper round that um, on many occasions, not one, uh, in the evening where the smog had come out, all the chimneys were belching smoke out from the coal. And, uh, and you get fog coming in and you get smog mixed with it, you get a bit of rain in there. And if you didn't know the streets, and I knew the streets because I was the local paper boy there and I used to, me and the other lads and girls, and we used to uh, traverse those streets and so we could do it blindfolded. Luckily we could do it blindfolded because you couldn't see within a couple of yards of you in those days. Seriously, it was that, it was thick, greeny colour. And again, I'm talking to those of you who lived in that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Thick, greeny, slimy stuff it was. 
And when you got home, you blew your nose, it was black. It was black because you'd been out in it for an hour. And that was why people were ill. So it wasn't always like that, of course. We did get sunshine, we got some fantastic days. And so those days were the same days when we went to Bellevue and it got you out of yourself. And those were the good days, those were the lovely days, those were the days to remember. And um, yeah, so over the next uh, a period of several weeks, I'm hoping, I've done quite a lot of, uh, as you can probably see quickly, these actual, um, not these, these smaller ones actually, but I've done some quite big nostalgic uh, views of the area that I used to live. And these areas in Manchester can be other cities, of course. Liverpool, I've done quite a bit of work there. Leeds, the Birmingham, there, there are many um, similarities with these streets, old cobbled streets, etc. You've got the trams, you've got the uh, trolley buses, you've got the buses, etc. Uh, that came in afterwards. Our livery was mostly red, although they were changed into certain areas, was it? Certainly with the 210, I think, to 219. I'm getting a bit technical and I'm sorry about this. But they changed the livery to the different ways you went, you know, Davy Hume up that way, etc. So the colours were slightly different. And um, yeah, love those trolley buses, been on them many a time. Very effective, very smooth as a matter of fact. Unlike the trams, which were apparently I've not been on the trams, uh, were quite rickety. The last tram out of Manchester was 19, early, early, not about January 1949. And I was only four years old then, so. I didn't get on one. Oh, I'm not sure aware that I got on one of them anyway. It may have come without knowing it. Uh, I've taken on one. And uh, yes, so those are nostalgic um, prints, uh, paintings and print from the paintings. I've just done a set now. I've completed a set, several in the set. I think about be nine or ten of these nostalgic paintings. Because when I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll. You know, I have to get it out of my system, exercise the demons. And a lot of the... Um, the work, the, the work that's gone into this. Sometimes I've had to research to, you know, bring things back. You know, you do this, whatever you're doing, you know, you have to look at old photographs, etc. Just to remind you what's going on and then put your own interpretation of it into it, which I did a lot of. But the recent ones I've found that I've rambled on so much about this over the years that I can just um, now put pen to paper or pencil to paper or pencil to paper and just... Um, recollect and I'm going I'm writing a story without any preliminary sketch if that sounds crazy I'm sorry about that but it's true and I'll get a piece of paper or a card some of them can be quite big you know two two by three foot and um, start off an oil painting but I'll start it by uh, simply putting a few marks on it to make a design up and then start in a theme like kids playing around the lamppost throwing your rope over the the lamppost or an old tyre you've got, and you used to get an old tyre and tyre ropes or gas lamps I'm talking about, and they had these arms that stuck out, you used to throw them over there and you used to use them as swings, they were recreation. They were castles to us, those lampposts. They weren't lampposts, they were just castles. And they were always, the ones we aimed for were just somewhere outside, um, sort of, um, the corner shops where the light was. You know, that's where it was, uh, it was all happening in those days. And um, because that was, that was, you know, the shopkeepers kept the lights on at all times there yeah, because they wanted to bring you in, you see. We used to play outside there. Anyway, these things came to pass and uh, that's what I've been um, I've been uh, painting recently. And these are yet to come and these are the ones that I'm hoping um, in the not too distant future to be talking to you about. Uh, nostalgic, definitely, but there are others, other works of art which I've been working on over the years which are not nostalgic. Uh, however, for these, this is going to take a little while to get to. I just thought I'd explain it to you rather than just paint. And um, yeah, I'll bring one or two other pieces up for you to look at in the future. Hope you'll uh, you'll uh, bear with me with that and, uh, and enjoy it as much as I've been. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. All the very best to you. Bye for now.